Hello, beautiful Black Queen. Thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Danny Ellison. I'm a narcissistic abuse recovery coach for adult children of narcissists. And I help Black women break generational cycles of narcissistic abuse by knowing no contact with their parents. <clears throat> if that is something that is interesting to you, please right now like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you don't miss upcoming content. So today I want to talk specifically to black women and specifically about how you can know whether or not your mom is a narcissist. And I think this is a timely message because um, many black women, <clears throat> at least when I come, when I interact with them, when I come into contact with them as clients, um, it's most often the case that until very recently, they had no idea what a narcissist was had no idea what narcissistic abuse actually is. And they were aware on some level that something was wrong in their relationship with their mother, but they could not put their finger on the fact that they were being abused. And so I just wanna talk through uh, 12 ways you can know that your mom is an abusive narcissistic parent and that you may want to consider no contact as an option. So without further ado, uh, one of the primary ways you can know that your mother is an abusive narcissistic personality. Um, also, really quick, let me address. So when we call someone a narcissist, what we really are saying is that they are someone who has narcissistic personality disorder. In order to say that with confidence, that person needs to have been clinically diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. And for most of us, that is just not the case. It's not going to happen, um, and it has not happened. However, we can identify narcissistic abuse, meaning the emotional, psychological uh, strategies that are used by this questionable narcissistic personality to inflict suffering on their victim. Uh, we can use the profile of what narcissistic abuse actually is to determine if we have been victims of narcissistic abuse, even if our parents have not been diagnosed formally. So with that said, um, how you can know if your mom is that narcissistic abuser is that you feel safer when she's not around. Hey, you're probably so used to that by now that you don't realize that it's not normal. Most children, adult children, even do not feel unsafe around their parent. That um, uneasy feeling you get when they come around, the need that you have to shut yourself down and kind of brace for what might be coming up next, that is a trauma response that indicates you've learned this person is not safe, they are unpredictable and could potentially hurt you. Uh, a second way that you can know that your mother or your parent is this narcissistic abuser is that you do something called gray rocking without really thinking about it. So when you gray rock, that means that you eliminate your personality, you shut down, you go blank, and you just bury all of your true feelings for a temporary period of time so that you can survive that contact with the narcissistic abuser. So some examples of this might be, you've learned by now that when your parents are having a bad day and they're in the mood to cuss you out and rage at you and they're gonna go off no matter whether you're right or wrong, whether you've actually done anything, whether you know what they're talking about, when none of that matters and you just are about to get yelled at, you shut down, you go blank, you don't say anything, you don't express any emotions on your face, you protect yourself from getting a hit potentially. If you get angry or have an emotional response to something they've done or said, you learn to avoid that by just going blank, okay? A third way you can know that your parent, specifically your mother, is a narcissistic abuser is that he or she will verbally attack you. Okay, a verbal attack is different than saying something that you don't like. A verbal attack is different than being a parent who gives some tough love or some harsh advice that their child doesn't want to hear. A verbal attack is when they come for you personally. Okay, if you have a parent 
who will fix their lips to attack your character, to tear down your confidence, to insult your appearance, right? They just say things that are designed to break your confidence. They have no grounding in any sort of parental agenda whatsoever. That is a huge red flag and major indicator that your parent is likely narcissistic. Uh, let's see. If your parent is not interested in knowing you, if you feel like who you really are as a person is a mystery to your parent because they're not interested in finding out about your passions, your likes and your dislikes, your convictions, your interests, they don't care. You know, when you try to talk to them about the promotion that you've got at work or the book that you just read that you really enjoyed or the conversation you had with this new person that you met, they just don't really say much. They change the subject. They may even tell you to hurry up and tell your story because they're tired of listening to it. Okay. That's a great sign that your parent is a narcissistic abuser. And what it indicates is that <clears throat> in their eyes, you are not a person. Okay. You are not um, an equal to them. You are a collection of spare parts for their use, okay? Your time, your attention, uh, the relationship, in fact, is not to serve you at all. It's merely a vehicle for them to drain your emotional storehouse when they're interested in doing so. So when you want to engage in the relationship and get some validation or some friendly conversation or you want to just know your parent on a deeper level, they will not be interested in doing that work with you. See where we are, number five. Yes, number five. Uh, another way you could know that your mother is a narcissistic abuser is that she uses what you confide in her against you at some point. So if you're an adult, you've already learned by now that your mother is not a safe person to go to. When you have a problem, especially when you make a mistake, you have an error in judgment, or you just do something that is, you know, outside of your character, and like, dang, I messed, I messed up over here in this area of my life. I would love to be able to go talk to my mom about it and get some reassurance and some perspective, some advice. You've learned that when you turn to her for that, she may offer you some version of that. Um, Though she also might reject you in that moment and offer you absolutely nothing positive. You know, she could just talk badly about you and kick you while you're down when you confide in her. But if she doesn't do that in the moment, the other move she'll likely make is to, you know, give you some comfort and reassurance in the moment. But not long after, probably the second you do something to upset her, because you're not willing to be controlled or manipulated the way that she wants you to be. She's going to turn what you've confided in, in her into ammunition to attack you. And she's going to say the thing that is the most exploitive of your insecurities, um, whatever it is that she thinks will hurt you the most is what she's going to say to you and you'll know in that moment because of the conversation you initially had with her when you confided in her that it is an intentional attack okay number six if your mother embarrasses you purposely in front of others especially if this is a, a habitual thing that she does so you have come to expect this like you know when you go around the rest of your family or she has the opportunity to interact with you in front of your friends, she's going to use that moment to say something to embarrass you specifically, or she'll treat you in a manner that is embarrassing. So you may have had, you know, friends or people who are close to you who see the way your mother treats you. Maybe they just overhear a phone call even um, questioning and, you know, they may not necessarily ask if you're being abused, though, you know, that may be the case also, but they will be taken aback by what they have witnessed um, with your mother because she is shaming you covertly, 
uh, through the way that she treats you. So if she talks down to you, if she's overly critical of every move that you make when other people are watching you, she is um, undermining your confidence and that is clear to other people. So uh, embarrassing you in front of others is a way that she further controls you by making you feel that you are, you're abnormal. You can't fit in with other people. She, she will undermine your ability to feel secure and at peace with others by humiliating you. Uh, number seven, I believe we are on, is she violates your boundaries. Plain and simple. So if you have ever drawn a clear line in the sand with this person and you said, for example, mom, please don't call me when I'm out with my friends unless it's an emergency, um, I'll, you know, text me if you need something. Your mother will call you like seven times the next opportunity that you go out with your friends just to violate that boundary. If you've communicated that you don't want her to call after 10 o'clock, or if you were living with her, you asked her to knock on your door instead of just barging in. Every single time she will violate that boundary. Okay, you maybe have learned in relationships outside of those with your parents that when a person does this to you and they hear what your boundary is or what your need is and they repetitively let you know that they're not gonna meet it, they blatantly um, violate the boundary or neglect the need, they're letting you know that they intentionally uh, have disregarded the emotional effect that it has on you and that it's not going to stop. So if your mother violates your boundaries as a habit, like if you, it's very difficult for you to get the peace, the privacy, the space, the respect that you really need and that you're able to get from other people, it's difficult to get that from her. It's a great indicator that she is a narcissistic abuser. Let's see where we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If your mother is a narcissistic abuser, she probably uses you for money. Okay, and this is probably not new to you being an adult, especially if she ever made you feel as a child that the money you had, like that you worked for, that you saved, that you had to give it to her, or she just took it from you. It's an indicator, like I mentioned before, she sees you as spare parts for her use. So your money is her money. And if you are an adult and you have followed that path of seeking validation through overachieving, you might have a really great job right now and be making more money than her. And she feels entitled to your money. She guilt trip you into spending your money. Um, she will lie to you to manipulate you into giving her your money and feels no sort of remorse or um, apprehension around manipulating you for your money. Number nine is that she manipulates you, right? To manipulate someone at all, emotionally, financially, is a sign that that person is nothing more than a puppet on a string to you, right? Some signs um, that you're being manipulated by your parents are, you know, you may be having a conversation with this person, they say something to you that is hurtful and you question it and then literally 30 seconds later they tell you that, that they didn't say that what they said was something else or you're taking it the wrong way and what i really mean by that is something completely different um that those subtle turns of phrase of the omission of critical truth the feigning memory loss when you try to talk about something um is a form of emotional ma manipulation in that your mom or, or your dad, either parent, they're trying to control your perception of reality, right? Truth is not relevant to them. Um, a cohesive reality is not even relative to them because their identity exists in these fragments, these broken pieces of an identity. 
So the concept that they owe you the truth, the concept that they owe you respect regarding your emotions, um, the idea that it is wrong for them to kind of fiddle around with your emotional well-being is foreign to them and they will not respect it. Number 10, if your mother's a narcissistic abuser, she will sabotage your success. So um, there may be this really weird push and pull feeling where your mom like supports you, motivates you and tells you that you need to be successful, but at the same time works against you every time you have an opportunity to take a step that she feels threatened by. Okay, if you feel like your mom is in competition with you, um, it goes right along with this. She will maybe sabotage things like your weight. Um, this is something that I don't hear talked about nearly enough, but the black moms and grandmas that purposely overfeed their children and grandchildren to satiate their own feelings about being overweight, um, especially moms with their daughters who simply don't want to see their daughters flower and be more beautiful than they are. Um, she may also sabotage your pursuits to do things like if, if she didn't graduate from college and you're really committed to going to college, she will use her words and her actions to make it as hard as possible for you to achieve that. And when you finally achieve it, um, her recognition will either be missing or muted, right? She's not really happy for you because your success only means her failure to her. Number 11, again, right along with this, she's jealous of you. Okay, it may be your looks, it may be your happiness, it may just be your innocence, the fact that you're not her. The fact that you're not limited by what she is limited by. Um, she, she's jealous of you, but more than that, if your mother is really this narcissistic abuser, you may not have admitted it to yourself. You may not want to admit it to yourself, but on some level, you know, because you've seen it with your own two eyes that she actually hates you. That doesn't mean that she doesn't love you. That's a different conversation for a different video, but it, she hates you. When she sees you genuinely happy, she attacks to shut it down because she doesn't want to see you happy. Um, when you are thriving, she is the person who positions herself against you, right? Like, if this is really your mother that I'm talking about, she's your worst enemy. She's meaner to you than any bully you ever had at school. She's the meanest person in your life. Like she has a personal vendetta out for you on some level. Okay, and uh, our final indicator that her mother is a narcissistic abuser is that she demonizes your sexuality. So it falls right in line with her being jealous of you as her daughter, when you come into puberty, when you begin to transition from being a girl to a woman, chances are she does not set you up for success in relationships. Um, she either prepares you to be single by telling you that men are no good and you need to solely pursue a career and an education because you're gonna be alone. So either that, or she just neglects to give you guidance around how to carry yourself, around what choices to make um, with boys or with young men when you begin to date. And rather than acknowledge that you are a human who has sexuality and it's normal, um, she'll shame you for the choices that you make as you are exploring your sexuality. And so she has probably called you a hoe for wearing red lipstick, for putting on a skirt, for talking to a boy, for doing things that are normal and perfectly acceptable um, and represent your independence as a woman. She has taken that opportunity to shame you and create a, a, a cycle of guilt and apprehension. So you probably don't have great 
uh, confidence with the opposite sex if you are being controlled by this abusive narcissistic mother. So those are my 12 indicators for how you can know if your mother is a narcissistic abuser. Uh, I know I said mother and father. It does apply to both parents, but I think these 12 are more specific to uh, the feminine personality and will apply most to your mother. Maybe that's a different video I can do with 12 signs that your father is a narcissistic abuser. Um, but if this resonated with you, I invite you to step over to my website, ellisoninc.com. Um, once you get to my website, you can do a couple of things. If you subscribe, you will get a free resource called the No Contact Toolkit. When you subscribe, you'll get an email that allows you to access um, a toolkit of the different online resources that I found. Um, that are most helpful when we're approaching this idea of going no contact with an abusive parent, when we're still in the early stage of you know, learning what that really means and deciding how we're gonna respond to it. I put some resources in one place that I think will really help you. So go on over there and subscribe to get your free no contact toolkit. Um, but if you're ready for the next step, like if this 100% hit home with you, and you're in some distress because you're in this situation right now, I invite you to schedule a trauma assessment with me. You can do that by booking a session on my website. And um, in that trauma assessment, I will help you to identify if what you've experienced with your parent was narcissistic abuse, assess the likelihood of uh, PTSD or CPTSD in your current life, and make a recommendation for whether or not no contact is the best way for you to move forward. Um, and this month specifically, being Black History Month, uh, Black women get a free trauma assessment. So if you book through my website, you'll be charged. But if you book through my Calendly link, so that's calendly.com slash Ellison Inc. I'll put it in the description for you. This month, if you book through that link, you get that trauma assessment for free. And if you move from that trauma assessment to becoming a full-time coaching client, you will get 22% off of my annual fee for the year. So um, with that said, I do have a limited number of spaces available for those packages. So if this is you, if you have that knowing, that unction, that gut feeling that I'm talking to you, please don't waste time, go schedule that trauma assessment so that we can see what the best next step is for your healing journey. As always, thank you for tuning in. I've enjoyed sharing with you. I look forward to communicating with you uh, more in the comments. Thank you if you were um, here for the first time. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.